If you've ever heard of Eden Fives, then watch this video right here. But if you've never heard of Eden Fives, then stay right here. Watch this video through the end because this is the video for you. Trust me when I say that this is a sport you do not want to miss. Hey there, my name is Emiliano and I love, love, love Eaton Fives. It's undoubtedly my favorite sport. This video is gonna be divided into five parts. The first one is what is Eaton Fives? The second one is how did Eaton Fives begin? The third one is where you can play Eaton Fives. The fourth one is how you can play Eaton Fives. The fifth one is the five Eaton Fives features. And then the last section will be about where you can find out more about Eaton Fives. So what is Eaton Fives? Well, I'm gonna borrow the definition from the Pepper Pot Podcast, which is the only five podcast as far as I'm aware. And they, they managed to define it very eloquently and very simply. Eaton Fives is a doubles game where people take turns hitting a quite small, bouncy rubber slash court ball with their gloved hands. The court has three sides and it has quite a variety of obstacles, hazards, ledges and edges to insert a bit of randomness and variety into each game. So that's the Pepper Pot podcast definition which I urge you to go check out. My definition or the way I've described it for people to understand is it's basically squash but with your hands. Where did Eaton Fives begin? The name Eaton Fives has been in use since the 17th century. And the game originated because students at Eton College used to play against the wall of a chapel where the buttress was the handrail and the landing of the stairs where they were waiting extended the court a bit more. There have been some additions and some modifications to the game since the 17th century obviously. However, that is earliest known beginning of the game. In 1840, the headmaster of Eton, Dr. Hawtory, built the first Eaton Fives courts. So these were divorced from the chapel wall and he built these first courts and he made some modifications to them. And that's the first time some Eaton Fives courts were built. In 1877, the first rule book was written and established more or less. So, so a specific set of rules for the game. They were written by A.C. Anger, put it right here. And he published the rules of the games of fives as played by Eaton, which is the first iteration of the rules, and that was in 1877. The first match between two schools was in 1885, and it was between Eaton and Harrow. Of course, other schools soon followed, and there have been continuous competitions between schools since then. There have also been competitions, as in cups. The first cup was in 1931, and it is the Kinnear Cup, that if you go to the Eaton Fives Association Instagram page, you can still see it's being played out today. And yeah, that's the game. Then the Second World War happened, and obviously Fives, as well as many other sports, slowly died down. But since then, it's picked up a lot of speed and it's gaining popularity, and it has a wider and wider reach, which leads us to our next set section of where you can play Eaton Fives. Now, if you go to the Eaton Fives Association website, then you can see that there is a small map or a map of all of the Eaton Fives courts where you can play. Now, some of these might not be open to the public. I think the one in Brazil is private, and I think there are some in specific private clubs. However, let me list the ones, um, well, let me list all of them, and then you can go on the website yourself. This is a English game, so the majority of the courts are in the UK at specific high schools or colleges and universities. There are some in Switzerland. I think there's three. There's a set of courts in Zurich, there's a set of courts in Geneva, and there's a set of courts in Suat. There are courts in Malaysia, there are courts in India, They're quite close to Nepal. There's one set of courts in Grillon, France. There is one court in Brazil, and there is the, the court I'm currently standing on here in Oaxaca, Mexico. Now, the next section is how to play fives. Now, the, the game is so old, it doesn't have rules, but it has laws. And while you can find them on the Eaton Fives website, they are confusing and not as straightforward as a completely new person that has never played fives would think. So you can go look for them, the link will be in the description, but I'm gonna explain them and they should in theory be easier to understand. The game is played by two teams of two people each. So that's two people per game on court at all times. You're wearing gloves and you can only hit the ball. You can't grab it or carry it and you can only hit it with a part of your hand that is gloved. You can hit it with your arms, your elbows or any other part of your body that does not have a glove on it. The ball has to hit the front wall once in between each person's contact. By that I mean that every time somebody touches it has to hit the front wall 
and then somebody else can touch it. It can bounce on any surface uh, multiple times except the floor. On the floor, it can only bounce one time, but it can bounce on any wall many, many times. But as many times as it can, while only bouncing on the floor once and having already touched the front wall. Every bounce on the front wall must be above this ledge. Games are played out of 12, and I think in very official competitions and matches, you play either 3 or 5 games of 12 points each. The game begins with a serve, which is served by Team A, and Team B cuts. The person that is cutting, or cutter, can demand as many serves as they want, so the server is obligated to serve in a way that is fair and is pleasant or doable for the cutter. If the cut is returned successfully, then play continues, and that is called the rally. Only the person or the team that is serving can win points. If the cut is successful but the cut return, that is the action that the cut receiver or the server must do to return the cut is not successful, then that person must switch with their teammate at once. After the second person on the teammate has served and has been cut down, that is to say that their cut return or the rally has failed and they have lost a point or they have not scored a point, then the teams must swap and the, the team that was cutting must now serve and the team that was serving must now cut. Cutting must hit the right side of the wall and it must be to the right side of this line or else it is called a black guard. The cutter is not obligated and can decide whether to continue play if the ball was a black guard. The last point is a step and the cutter can cut along the entire length of the wall and is no longer limited to cutting to the right side of the line. That means that there is no black guard and this is also the hardest cut to return as the trajectory of the ball is quite unpredictable. Lastly, if a player is impeded by an external factor on hitting the ball, for example, if the player of the opposing team is in the way, if the ball hits a player of the opposing team, or if the ball becomes stuck on a ledge, then the player can call a let. That means that nobody wins or loses a point and the whole play must be restarted. Now, there, according to the Eaton Fives Instagram, these are the five features of fives. Personally, I like this a lot. I like the fact that there's five of them, and I also agree with all of them, especially the last two, which are great and are, I think, the reason why fives is so enjoyable to everybody that plays them. Number one is that anybody can play. Fives is a wall, a ball, and a person. And that's really, really true. Having a fives court is great, and it is the best way to learn. But if you're not near a fives court, or if you like to practice your skills and you don't have access to a fives court, then you can play with a tennis ball, you can play without gloves, you can just bounce a ball against a, 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 um, any wall, and that is practice and that will actually help you. Number two is the buttress. Somewhat paradoxically, the buttress here is the easiest and the best way to kill the ball and therefore end play. By this I mean that everybody will be aiming to the buttress because it is where the bounces are most unpredictable and are harder to get, therefore increasing your chances of winning the game or at least scoring a point. However, if you watch a five game from the top, you'll see that players seem to rotate around the buttress. It makes it makes game much more unpredictable, random, more enjoyable, and faster. And by giving us an easy way out of the game, it makes everybody play harder and more aggressively, and therefore it makes it more fun in the long run. It also makes every game different, even if you're playing with the exact same people. Every single game is different because of the buttress. Number three is that it's hands-on. And again, this is very, very true. It's way easier to learn how to control your hands than to learn how to move a tennis racket or a paddle or something along those lines. Our hands are, after all, an extension of our body, so it's way easier to learn how to control the, the direction of the ball, the speed of the ball, even the spin of the ball. And it's what makes it such a great, such a joy to learn how to play fives, is that you can see your hands do things that you never would have thought. Actually, in my experience, five increases your reaction time and the, your ability to predict where the ball is going to go increases as you play fives more and more often and at a higher and higher level. Number four is that there is no referee and there is no umpire. We play fives as human beings. Even during particularly tough or intense competitions, everybody will be fair and everybody will be honest. Honoring the game and honoring the rules is more important than winning a point. And since it, there's four people on court all at the same time, all watching the ball very, very closely, then these four people become the referee, they become the umpire, and that makes it a strangely honest and earnest sport. We also play for the joy of playing more than the joy of winning. If, if you're ever playing and you're in a particularly good and long rally where everybody is doing things perfectly, 
and nobody's winning a point, you'll see everybody start to smile and want to keep the rally going. Of course, you are trying to win the point, but if the rally is to end unexpectedly and in a disappointing manner, so if it's hit out or if it's let or if it's stuck somewhere, everybody will be disappointed regardless of whether you could have won the point or you could have not won the point because what we want to do is we want to keep a good rally going it's really exciting and it shows that the joy is in the rally and not in the point it's the same reason we clap or we congratulate whoever makes a particularly good shot like hitting the back bricks or like hitting it into the hole the fifth and final point is partnership in such a small pace communication with your partner is crucial it can mean the difference between getting a good shot or not getting the shot at all and missing. There's a real bond that's formed between five partners, even if it's only the first time you play together. Being in such a small court and being forced to communicate constantly and to work as an inc incredibly close-knit team means that bonds are forged even quicker than you can imagine. But these are the five features of fives and they make the game all the more worth it and all the more fun because of it. So finally, if you want to learn more, I'm gonna leave a lot of the resources linked below. You can always ask me directly and I'll try to find out if I can. There is the Eaton Fives Association website, which I'll leave. Everything will be linked down in the description, but there's the website. There is the Gloves and Balls shop where you can buy some Eaton Fives books. There is the Eaton Fives Instagram where you can keep up to date with more day-to-day -day news and pictures and everything. There is the Pepper Pod podcast, which I might or might not be making an appearance on in the future, and which I urge you to check out regardless. And they do have a YouTube channel where you, which you can subscribe to right here. It's great, you can watch rallies, you can watch entire games, you can watch interviews. Honestly, go check it out. I really enjoy watching the games, even if they are four, five, six years old. Uh, but yeah, that's all for me now. Uh, thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing. I really appreciate it. And go check out this video. Cheers.